G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy. In today's video, we're gonna be discussing the pressure gauge with respect to all of the 18 AFL coaches in the league. I'm gonna be using Tier Maker to help this as a visual tool. I'm gonna to talk about which coaches enter 2024 under the most pressure and which ones have, um, you know, a relative lack of pressure, I suppose. So to make this simple, I've tried to organize it into five tiers like I've been doing with other tier makers that you may have seen across the channel. So we're gonna go through those categories now. The first one is under the pump. Those guys who start the year with a pretty immediate sense of uh, needing to perform well. Then there's a category below that, which is need to perform generally, like they can't have a bad year. In the middle tier, we've got some margin for error. The fourth tier will include coaches where it would have to go horribly wrong for them to really lose their job this year. And then the fifth tier, guys who are pretty damn sweet. Before we get into the video, guys, if you could consider subscribing to the channel, help it grow as much as possible for the start of the 2024 season, it would mean a lot to me. Right, so let's talk about the coaches that uh, are going to be, in particular, under the pump. Let's start with one. I like to do one for each category to sort of outline the different parameters. So under the pump, who starts the year under the pump? I think I think the first one that comes to mind is beverage. Uh, and I, I realize there's some contractual nuance to this because I think uh, as I'm informed by, uh, I think it was Max Hansen said that uh, he's got a two year deal and that he just signed. So I realize that that might not mean that he gets cut early or anything like that. But I do think there's an immediate sense to, to perform and, and the narrative around beverage is that it's a little bit tenuous after disappointing season. So uh, I'm happy to put him in the top category of pressure. Uh, at the other end of the scale, who's gonna be pretty damn sweet? Uh, Craig McRae stands out, <laughs> you know? One of the most interesting, you know, starts to a coaching career that I've ever seen. You know, it takes a team from whatever they were, bottom four, bottom two even, bottom four, uh, and took them to a prelim and then a premiership. So, you know, as far as job security goes, it's hard to compete there with Craig McRae. So let's start filling in the, the middle bits as well. I'd say that Brad Scott needs to perform. I think he did have a pretty encouraging first half of the season for Essendon. I think there were some good signs, some, some green shoots of growth there. I think back to when they beat the Ds in Adelaide um, and certainly just looking a lot more improved than the previous season, that has to be said. But I mean, you also consider the, the listless end to the season and it was almost West Coast-like, you know, one of those games anyway against GWS where there was just no resolve. And I think signs like that, performances like that will be really concerning more so than just the win-loss ledger. So I think with Essendon and in particular Brad Scott, there is an impetus there for him to completely eradicate games like that which I'll back him in to do. But I, I do think, you know, he's not completely secure. I, I think he, he needs to perform relatively well uh, to keep his job. Who's got some margin for error? I would say Simon Goodwin probably goes into here. I know there's a lot of dark cloud around Melbourne right now, the narrative around the culture and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, you look at performances, he made the top four pretty consistently the last three years. So 21 premiership, obviously, 22 and 23. Yes, there were straight sets, but he's still getting this team into that finals mix and, and therefore he's not entirely safe, but he's certainly not under the same degree of pressure to lose his job. Um, so I think there's some margin for error here where if, um, if say Melbourne slip out of the eight entirely, he probably just moves to under the pump rather than, than lose his job. Would have to go horribly wrong. I would probably put Sam Mitchell in this category. I don't think, you know, I don't think it's clear that he's he's pretty sweet. I think I think he's one tier up from that. You know, he hasn't necessarily established any level of success yet at Hawthorne. It just looks to be going well, right? They, they, they play a pretty good brand. Bit of a gap between their best and the worst, pretty typical of a young side. Uh, I think, I can't really imagine a world in which Sam Mitchell gets sacked this year. So uh, again, I'd probably have him a level above, uh, you know, someone who's just won a premiership, for instance. Uh, that being said, yeah, I think that's about right for Sam Mitchell. So we, we've kind of categorized uh, one for each layer of pressure as it were now let's talk about adam simpson he probably is under the pump again same thing with beverage there is a contractual element to this but likewise with beverage i think that runs to the end of 25 and obviously with the way west coast played last year it got pretty close it got pretty close to simo leaving i think ultimately money talks i will back him in Naturally, as an Eagles fan, I, I, I actually don't think Simo will get sacked. I believe we'll get through this. But either way, in terms of pressure and you know, importance of a good performance in 2024, um, we, and it's the same thing with Brad Scott. You just He needs to focus on eliminating those completely pathetic performances, and then we've made a fairly good degree of progress. But either way, Simo is going to have a bit of pressure this year, you'd think. I'd also put Justin Longmuir from Fremantle in the need to perform category because uh, to be honest, uh, as an outsider looking in, I, I don't really see any need for them to change their coach. Sure, they bounced into finals and bounced out, but I think 
when you factor in how young that list is, how much mature depth that team lost over the last couple of years. Unfortunately, it didn't didn't stop in 23. We saw them lose two close to best 22 players. So with Longmuir, you know, when I say need to perform, it probably needs to be pushing for finals. So 10th or 11th probably will be enough to keep his job, uh, provided you know there is some improvement on last year, which. You know, that's kind of implied because they finished 14th or 13th last year or something like that. So I'd say that he probably needs to, you know, hit that goal, hit that target to, to keep his job, to be honest. I think that's fair to suggest. I'm going to put Clarko in would have to go horribly wrong. I don't know if he's pretty sweet. Maybe you could put him in pretty sweet, actually. Um, I'll think about that. You know, it feels like his first season, yes, they came second last, but they did also improve. And he also didn't spend that much time there. Well, he did, but not a full season. Maybe he is in pretty sweet, actually. I, I might put a pin in that for now. Damien Hardwick probably also in the... Oh, probably in the pretty sweet category. I think there's no way that they... You know, there's no way that... I, I can't remember what contract he signed. I think it was like five years or something. So I think as far as job security goes, they're going to give Hardwick plenty of time. I think that one's pretty pretty self-explanatory. I put Nix in the sum margin for error territory. Now, that is not, this is not a reflection of what I think of Matthew Nix. I actually think he's, I think he's actually a very good coach. I've always had this opinion of Adelaide is that they always seem to play with a pretty good spirit. And, and for years there, it looked like they were playing much better than what I thought their best 22 should produce. And I think that is a sign of a really good coach. Now they've evolved to a, part, a point where their best 22 is strong. So that's not a knock on Adelaide. That being said, it's not as though he's completely transcended expectations every single time. And therefore, you know, I think there's another expectation for Adelaide to, to make finals. And so I probably have a middle tier, but equally, by the same token, I can't imagine a well where Matthew Nix gets sacked next year. Who else have we got here? I think Ross Lyon arguably goes into pretty sweet. I think one season into a new coaching role, he got him into finals at top six with a lot of good promising numbers and got them playing a pretty consistent brand. I think he's probably safer than would have to go horribly wrong. I don't think the Saints would back it back down on their investment uh, of getting a high profile Ross Lyon back to the club within one season, even if it, they do bottle it next year. So I think he's earned the pretty sweet status, to be honest. Fagan is also pretty sweet. I think, you know, I, I did a video recently about the impact that Fagan uh, in particular has had on the Brisbane Lions and, you know, they could go completely to up this year, and I think Fagan would still be the right guy to lead him out of it. Ken Hinckley is an interesting one. Ken Hinckley is an interesting one where the performances have actually been better than you would think if you simply went off public perception. Because he gets talked about as a coach losing his job potentially so much for a guy that has actually achieved a reasonable amount at Port Adelaide. Now, I'm sure Port Adelaide fans have a much better and nuanced opinion or perspective of Ken Hinckley here, but... At the end of the day, yes, they went out in straight sets and their finals performances have been found wanting a little bit, but he's getting there. He's getting them into the top four. So I would say, I'd say some margin for error. I'd probably put him, you know, in would have to go horribly wrong in all other circumstances, but I just think that the, the pressure turns up on Ken Hinckley so quick, then I'm probably going to put him in some margin for error, if that makes sense. Uh, what about Chris Scott? Chris Scott's probably in the would have to go horribly wrong category. Or is he more in pretty sweet? This is actually tough and it is annoying because I came up with the categories and even I'm struggling to actually differentiate with some of them. What would have, what would it take for Chris Scott to, to be sacked? It would have to, I don't even know. I, I actually think he could probably go into pretty sweet here. I, I think it's probably going to be a, a good batch of coaches there. When you consider the legacy of, of Geelong and, and probably also the public expectation of what are we going to get from Geelong this year? If they bounce back into you know finals mix, then he looks fantastic. And if they fall to the bottom four, is there really going to be that much criticism, or is it kind of just a case of this was coming? So I mean, from that perspective, it's hard to make a case that Chris Scott's going to face any real um, pressure to get sacked in 2024. Adam Kingsley, I think, goes in the pretty sweet category. I, I think we were all kind of shocked at the second half of the season where they really adapted to his game style, started playing one of the most entertaining brands of football in the league right now. Um, and, you know, he was so close to knocking Collingwood out of the prelim. So as far as safety goes, I think Adam Kingsley qualifies there. So we got three interesting ones. John Longmire, whew, another tough one. You know, we're talking about a fantastic legacy there. Um, and, you know, it's been the 2022 season where they sort of probably exceeded expectations in terms of how much they bounced back up the ladder so quickly after a few years down the bottom there. 
not a very long period of time at all. Um, 2022 injury issues, fitness issues, still made the finals. I probably put him in would have to go horribly wrong, probably just because there is a degree of expectation as well on Longmire. Now, is there a really substantive difference between Chris Fagan and John Longmire? Maybe, maybe not. Like in terms of security, like Longmire is a premiership coach and Fagan is not. Both have played in the grand final the last couple of years. Swans made finals despite the adversity. Maybe he just goes down here. Hmm. I hope my logic's coming across right. Michael Voss is an intriguing one. I'm gonna probably put him in some margin for error. He's probably, he's certainly not, uh, would have to go horribly wrong. And I don't think he is, has an, an immediate need to prove himself next year because of how well Carlton finished the season. That being said, if they fail to really bang back into contention, I think the pressure would at least ramp up. That's probably where I'd say. So if Carlton missed finals again, then I probably would move him up to under the pump. That's probably a good clarification for this level. I think with Carlton's list profile, there is some urgency to perform well, but because he's come off a good season, then I don't think he's in the need to perform category. I think I think he's got some margin for error. Adam Uze is a tough one. Um, you know, how do you assess a first year coach? Is he, you know, he's a first year coach now. So is Hardwick there in terms of his role at the Gold Coast Suns. However, Hardwick has the legacy and profile. And so he's definitely pretty sweet. Is Adam Uze necessarily absolutely golden no matter what happens next year? I'd say maybe, maybe I'll just put him up here just because he doesn't have the, the profile of someone else. Like let's say things get like Mark Neald bad <laughs> at uh, at Richmond this year. Would, would Uze stay? Probably not, probably not. So that would probably categorize, be categorized as would have to go horribly wrong. Yeah, maybe it's there's some subtle difference between these, but I hope I've come up with this in a fairly comprehensible way, guys. But let me know, um, I'll probably leave it there. Let me know what you think of those rankings of coaching pressure. Again, this is also about perception as much as anything, but I think, I think I'm happy with that. Um, a lot of coaches safe, a couple that under the pump, and you know a couple more that probably need to have a good year to, to really buy some security. Maybe not avoid getting sacked, but to buy a bit more security. But yeah, let me know in the comments what you think. As always, I'm open to your you know perspectives. It helps me get better at what I do. I appreciate you watching the content, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers. Hey, buddy, could you please confirm that the guy pictured middle is Noah Long? I've done this before where I put a player on a video and it, I don't know if the player is wrong. Yeah, I, yeah that's not a that's not lot. I know it is. I'm literally recording a video right now and I stopped to, to listen to that and uh, I might leave that into the video because it played right into my microphone. <laughs> yes, that is Noah Long.